My name is Charles Hartman and I'm Professor of East Asian Studies at the State University of New York in Albany. So my time in Taiwan here on, uh, as a Fulbright Scholar grew out of a collaborative project which I had with uh, a professor in Taiwan named uh, Li Droying. And Professor Li uh, discovered a, a very important document during the course of, uh, of research on his PhD dissertation at Harvard. And uh, he and I subsequently uh, worked up this document and published it. As a result, we decided to undertake a systematic search for uh, similar documents that might uh, exist more or less unknown. Essentially, we have located in a Ming Dynasty edition of um, a Song official who was executed. Uh, he's one of the few Song Dynasty officials who were actually executed for uh, speaking out their mind on, on, on policy. Right? Uh, we've discovered in his collected works a series of colophones. And colophones are inscriptions that are written on the end of a scroll. We've discovered a series of these which go back to what were originally documents that came from this person. His name was Chen Dong. So they are very interesting because they were written about 100 years after his death. And so they show us uh, how essentially, well, one stage in the process by which his image was created. History is essentially a result of two things, in my view. It's a result first of things that happen, right? Obviously, right? But it's also the result of things that happen subsequently. In other words, we don't really have any things such as pure absolute fact about the past. Everything that comes down to us comes down to us uh, as a result of things that happen subsequently. Therefore, nowadays, a view of Song history that has been shaped by subsequent events in China and to a certain extent around the rest of the world, but mainly in China. Discoveries of new documents change just slightly that perception of what we think we already know because it's almost like a picture. When you take a picture, you have things that are in the foreground and you have things that are in the background. And essentially the picture we have of Chinese history at, at any given point puts certain things in the foreground. Okay? New discoveries change that picture a little bit. It may cause us to focus on something which has hitherto been in the background importance of my topic uh, in some small way perhaps uh, alter the sort of received images we have of Song Dynasty history. My affiliation was with the Center for Chinese Studies at the uh, uh, National Library and uh, I, I found the center very well equipped. They have one of the, uh, not only one of the best rare book collections in Taiwan, but uh, indeed in the world. And they have a very active and intensive uh, operation for protecting and digitalizing and uh, making Chinese rare books accessible. So that was one of the major reasons I chose the library uh, as an affiliation. And they have been uh, remarkably cooperative and helpful. One of the things I've encountered from a number of Taiwan scholars who work on Song, they think that my work is different from that which Chinese scholars do. So in, in other words, Chinese scholars obviously are the vast majority of scholars in the world who work on Song dynasty history. They come out of a Chinese educational and cultural background. So they approach Chinese history in a certain way. Uh, and they've said that uh, because I come out of a different background, that they've noticed in the work that I do that it's not quite exactly the same. My approach towards what is interesting in a text, for example, what is significant, uh, so sometimes are, are different from theirs. I think this difference and an awareness of that difference and a discussion of those differences, that, that's uh, cultural exchange.
Taiwan community of Song Scholars has been uh, has been very welcoming and uh, has shown a great deal of interest and enthusiasm towards my work. Uh, I've been invited to give a number of lectures in Taiwan at different levels, so from from colleges to uh, academia scenica. I was always very well received and was always very happy to, uh, happy to do so. So that's the first thing I'll, I will tell my colleagues when I get back. The second thing I will tell them is that I've gotten a good amount of work done. Uh, I've only been th three months in Taiwan, but uh, I've been able to work out this, the major outlines of this article. And lastly, I, I, I will tell them that um, if they're so inclined, they should definitely apply for a Fulbright. <laughs> okay.